Hello, welcome to HTML5 Tutorials, Chapter 7, HTML5 Form Input Attributes, Part 2, brought to you by Agpro Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn about the new form input attributes in HTML5. So, here is a list of HTML5 form input attributes. In the first session, we learned about these attributes, these first set of attributes. They are autocomplete, autofocus, list, max, min and multiple. So, in this session, we are going to cover the rest of the input attributes. They are required, pattern, placeholder, step, height and width. So, without wasting much time, let me make you understand what is required attribute. So here comes the required attribute. The required attribute specifies that an input field must be filled out before submitting the form compulsorily. Otherwise, it will not allow you to submit the form. Okay, it is something like it validates the form before you submit. Okay, before you submit the data. So what the required attribute is going to give us when I make use of it in my HTML form? Okay, let us and before that, the required attribute works with the following input types: text search. URL, telephone, email, password, date pickers, number, checkbox, radio, and file. So now let me jump into Visual Studio Code and let me show, show you a demo of at, uh, required attribute. So let me take a form tag first. So your let me take like first name or just a name. Let me enter the input type as text after that add like email so the input type will be email and now let me add a break line so let me add an input type submit let me do control s let me push this page to the browser now this is the form now I'm not entering anything I'll click submit okay it's not validating this fields like I'm, I'm not entering any value but still it's allowing us to click the submit button and it's not validating the controls here so if I we need to validate what I need to do is I need to add this required attribute so required attribute tells like this field is compulsory and it has to be filled so it is required and you also let me add a required sorry it is required do control s let me go back and let me refresh now when i click submit you can observe here it's validating and telling like before submitting the form you have to fill this field compulsorily so this we can achieve with the help of required attribute so now let me enter like something sam and let me click submit and it's telling like this field also is compulsorily to be filled before submitting the form why because we have specified in our code to all to the two input types text and email like required attribute so when i fill this Okay, then it allow us to submit the form. Right now, I have not in, written any backend code to submit the form, but okay, it's, it works now. Okay, now when I click submit, it is asking like fill out this field. This is what the advantage of using the required attribute. Okay, and coming to the next one, the pattern. The pattern attribute specifies a regular expression that the input element's value is checked against. And the pattern attribute works with the following input types text search, URL, telephone, email, and password. Here we can observe a simple code, okay, that is country code, and input type is text, and the pattern is A to Z uppercase and A to Z smaller case, and within the curly braces three. So this input type text is going to take only three characters, and the three characters combination should be the uppercase uh, a to Z or the lowercase A to Z values. Okay, apart from that, it's not going to take anything. So this is what the pattern attribute does. So let me show you a demo of that also. Country code. Let me remove this. And here it is input type. It's text itself. But what I need to do is I need to add a pattern attribute. And I need to specify the pattern so the pattern is it can contain a to z and low case a to z characters but it should contain only three characters it can be uppercase or lowercase a to z values between the a to z characters so now let me do control s let me go back and let me refresh the page and here we get the country code so i'll enter a 
SC and click submit it works fine but suppose if I enter 1 2 3 and I click submit it's telling like please match the requested format so our pattern is I can enter the characters it can be uppercase or lowercase but it should be only three I can't enter one two three or something like that so that's the reason I'm getting a warning telling like please match the requested format suppose if I enter capital A and X and capital W and this works fine but if I enter A Z F G it's telling like please match the requested format so this pattern attribute it specifies a regular expression okay one well, once when only that pattern is matched that input field value will be taken and submitted okay that's the advantage of using this pattern attribute and coming to the placeholder the placeholder attribute specifies a int that describes the expected value of an input field okay the int is displayed in the input field before user enters the value and once user enters the value the placeholder will get disappeared okay it is something like a int like what user has to fill within that text box okay so let me show you a demo of it let me remove here, remove this and let me add so let me do control Z I hope I get those controls yes here is let me remove this also and now what I'll do is let me add a placeholder it does like oh, before that let me show you the plain form how it looks when I refresh the page it looks like this name and email but what if I give a int within that text box telling like please enter the name and your please enter the email ID it looks good and those text will disappear as soon as we type something inside this text box so let me show you a demo of this placeholder attribute telling like enter the name okay and here again the placeholder enter the email ID control is let me go back and let me refresh here you can observe we are getting a placeholder telling like enter the name and this placeholder will disappear as soon as I enter the text inside that and this too okay this is what the advantage of using the placeholder attributes it just gives into the end user like what has to be filled in that inside that form inside that field okay and coming to step the step attribute specifies the legal number intervals for an input element for example if step is equal to 3 the legal numbers could be minus 3 0 3 s 6 etc the step attribute works with the following input types number range date time local month time and week okay now what I'll do is let me take the simple example and let me demonstrate that so what I'll do is let me remove this enter number and the input type I'm going to take it as number itself okay and apart from that I'm going to tell like step is 3 let me add it uh, like this let me go back and let me refresh here I get the number so now you can observe here now before that let me show you something like this let me remove this first step 3 that attribute and let me show you a demo so you can observe here now when I when I click on this upward arrow it is taking the count of 1 like it is increasing the value of the number by 1 2 3 4 5 okay and decreasing also by one number only suppose if I want to increase the on the click of the support button the value has increased by 3 the value has increased by uh, the value 3 okay so how do I do that it's very simple all I need to do is I need to add a step so it's something like once user click the upward button okay take a count of three in the three and now when I click again the upward button it takes a count of three plus three that is six okay this is what the advantage of using the step and decreasing also you can observe here okay this is the advantage of using the step attribute okay and height and width the height and width attribute specify the height and width of an input type image this is what something new okay input type image element so uh, what we'll do is let me take a demo of this so let me take enter name and input type is text and let me remove this step 3 and similarly let me copy this and paste it down 
and let me specify it as email and the input type is also email so here is the email and you control s let me go back and let me refresh and these things we have seen it's pretty simple but instead of submit button so let me give a image okay the uh, arrow image which indicates to submit so what I'll do is instead of uh, submit I can type I can give the type as image so I have to give the path of that so I have an image here so where is my image so let me copy the path of this okay giving the path of that image and I can set the height and width of that image so height so let me take the height what is present here height is 48 and width is 48 so let me go and set that 48 height is 48 and the width too it is 48 so when I refresh this page okay I'm going to get an image here you can observe here okay you can observe here this looks pretty cool right uh, you can set the height and width of an input type image okay that is what the advantage of using these attributes height and width attribute the height and width attribute specify the height and width of an input type image element okay and I hope you understood the attributes whatever we learned till now very clearly that is required pattern placeholder step height and width and this completes the HTML5 form input attributes okay so finally thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to our youtube channel and pro training you can also like our facebook page visiting this url you can also follow us on twitter for further reference of our website we are on linkedin too last but not the least please don't forget to give the feedback thank you have a great day